What's up drummers? Or anyone else who wants to learn how to run backing tracks live. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that today. And it's a relatively cheap setup and it's probably the easiest way I've ever seen that you can run backing tracks. There's people that get a lot more complicated with it, but for the everyday average guy, this is probably the most cost effective and easiest way to do it that I found anyways. If you've got a better way, drop it in the comments below and share so everyone else can learn your secrets. We're gonna jump into it. I'd like to start off by listing items that you're gonna need for this. I'll try to post links to those items below. So if you guys wanna purchase them, you can. Not affiliated with any of the companies that I'm about to show you guys. These were just the most cost effective brands that I could find at the time when I set this up. So the first thing that you're gonna need is this. Uh, what that actually is, is a pistol carrying case. It is the perfect size to house everything that you're gonna need. So I'm gonna show you guys what you need in order to run backing tracks like I do live. First thing you're gonna need is in-ear monitors, a DI box, a small mixer, a speaker cable. What the hell do you call this? A left and right channel splitter, quarter inch adapter. All right, so how I set this up is I'll generally have this entire box set beside me right here when I play. And like I said, I did this to be the most cost effective as I could. I just use a regular storage tub and I set it on my left side when I drum. So if I need to adjust the volume while I'm playing, if my headphones accidentally become unhooked, I'm right here to fix it. So the first thing you do is run power to your mixer, like so. The second thing you do is plug in your splitter cable. And so when you work with your studio engineer, in order for this to work, he has to split your effects on one channel and your click track on the other channel. My clicks come in on the black one. That's how I tell them apart. I have them color coded. So my clicks go in the black one. I want my clicks going into the mixer board because this is what comes back to me. I want the tracks, my bass drops, my rhythm guitar, any effects that we have in the tracks, I want those going to the soundboard. And I do that by plugging the red or the tracks into a DI box. The DI box then gets ran into the house PA system. And so what that does is your clicks come back to you. You can control the volume on that. Your tracks go through the house PA system. So anyone who's listening to you play can hear it. Uh, the reason I do it this way is so I don't get off time from the tracks. The clicks and the tracks are all in the same uh, timing. So as long as you're playing to your click, your effects are gonna hit when they need to hit. So long as your other bandmates don't get off time with you. The third thing I do is I plug my in-ear monitors into my adapter and I plug them into the headphone part of the mixing board. Son of a bitch. And that's pretty much the entire setup. After that, I, I use my phone personally. Uh, I load all my tracks onto a phone and it's not real fancy. I just hit play uh, when I want to start a song and then stop it at the end. Next song, I hit play again. So I don't have a, you know, very extravagant setup, but it didn't cost me hardly anything. And it's super easy to set this up. I pretty much open this box, plug a few things in and I have my backing tracks ready to go. Basically the last step is plugging your phone in, putting your in your monitors in, and then you're ready to go. A couple of pointers here. I always pack an extra power supply. If you don't have an extra power supply for your mixing table, I suggest buying an extra one when you buy it. Those things go out from time to time. And again, if that goes out, your whole setup doesn't work. It never hurts to carry a second set of in-ear monitors as well. I always have a spare on me. You never know when those things are gonna give out. And the last piece of advice I would tell you is if you're running your backing tracks on your laptop, also have them on your phone. If your laptop crashes, it's a bad deal. If you're running them on your phone, bring a junk phone and have them loaded on there. Just What I'm saying is have your songs loaded on a spare device. That way if your device crashes, the battery runs out, whatever the case might be, you've got another device with those songs loaded on there. It's just always good to have a backup plan. And so that's it guys, that's how I run backing tracks. Um, very cost effective, super easy to set up. It all packs up into this box when you're done and it's, it's really light and easy to carry. So hopefully this helps some of you guys out. If you've got a better way, uh, to do it, make sure you drop it in the comments below. If you like the video, subscribe to my channel. And if you think that this video could help any of your other musical friends out, be sure to share it. Helps me out a lot. Thanks, guys.